The Super C starts 6,000. Let's get this over with. So this episode begins at night time with Fluttershy in bed and, and Rainbow Dash crashing into her room. Was that intended to be a naked joke? So, what exactly is Sire Season, and why does Rainbow Dash seem to be in the rush? Including the Sire Seasons that Twilight ha hasn't been there er, before she even came to Ponyville? Oh boy, judging by Rainbow's expression, I'm probably going to guess that this interpretation of Pinky is going to hurt. Well, not this year. This year, I'm going to get there before sunrise. I'm going to use all the cider ice cream. Yeah, well, so while Rainbow pretty much glows in her greedy ways, big surprise, every pony got the same idea, and... Oh, God, here we go. Gosh, Pinky, I love your new style. Who are all these ponies? Isn't this great? I think I'm so excited about Cider Season, and I have a brilliant idea to come down here and camp out, so I can give you others about it, and they all thought it was a great idea, too, and now it's a big off Cider Season! Well, gosh, that's a lot of ponies. Hope you don't run out before you get any. Uh, yeah, Pinky. Selfish much? Okay, so skipping the theme, we see that everybody lines up for Sire Season with Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy on the way back. This is exciting, Spike. Opening day of Sire Season. Yeah, that means it's only 30 more days till Sapphire Season. You know, despite some good episodes you've been having in Season 4, Spike, you know I still hate you, right? Attention, everybody! So the Apple family is basically forming... Is opening in in sire season to help keep their business afloat, and I guess it's just me. Well, that pretty much gives them a lot of money. And then we get this. And he drinks the cider, and she gets most of it. Yeah, why don't you share that with your friends, you little bitch? Alright, so long story short, Rainbow finally gets the front of the line, but she doesn't get any cider. <sighs> oh, yeah. And I'm like, and like Golden Fox, I hate to be the animal in the room, but I'm going to give something away. Not in terms of the story, but involving Rainbow Dash. <sighs> so, throughout almost the entire episode, up until the final act, act there's this running joke of how Rainbow Dash never gets any cider. And I'm going to be honest with you... It's not funny. It's pretty much about as cruel as the jokes they do on South Park. Sorry, everypony. That's it for today. <gasps> surprise, surprise. He ran out again. Okay, yeah, that's another thing about this episode that I don't like. It's the interpretation of Rainbow Dash. Okay, most of the episode, Rainbow Dash just comes off as selfish, greedy, obnoxious, and... And, and and completely unlikable. Yeah, you always run out. For the record, I don't mind. Why can't you make enough cider for all of us? Or at least for me? Yeah, Miss Element of Loyalty. Because, again, her character gets derailed, she becomes a greedy, self-centered bitch, and she doesn't even give a rat's ass of what anyone else thinks. Great! We're not even five minutes in, and already I found a few problems to pick at. So now the other ponies start complaining about the cider issue, but Applejack tries to, to be the voice of reason. Thank God. Hold on, Pony. We've done our best to improve supply this year. You always say that! Okay, I understand this is business, but is every pony in this episode going to act like an asshole? Because that's what it seems like. I get it's business and the customer's always right, but you know that one line that Destroy Man said in No More Heroes about customers? There's, I think it was something like this. You know, I just can't stand people with all their nonsense complaints. Like they think you can just say anything. Yeah, that's the point.
ponies in this episode in a nutshell. And it's always true. But Apple Family Cider is made with love and integrity. And only the highest quality apples in equestrian. Sorry, but that recipe takes time. Thank you, Applejack. Because, again, that's what you have to do when making a special recipe. You take time and patience. Okay? But, again, it's like, patience is a virtue. Who gives a shit? Okay, we just want the damn cider, which I can only assume is there. This pony's version of wine, I'm guessing. Just be patient. We'll have plenty more tomorrow. Oh, and as if this couldn't get any more annoying, this happens. Rainbow, actually. Yeah. Another problem I already have with this episode is the interpretation of Pinky. Good God, what... Like Rainbow, they made her her selfish, greedy, self-centered bitch. Like, why would you do that? Okay? I mean, for the love of all of Jesus, why do you have to make probably the best pony act like a selfish asshole who shoots her mouth off and pretty much says to your friend, Oh, guess what? Oh, what's the matter? You gonna get tough cider? Well, boo fuckity hoo Why would you do that? Oh, and just to make things even more annoying, we are then introduced to our antagonist, and I'm gonna be honest with you, we are introduced to the antagonist, the Flim and Flam Brothers, and one of them happens to be voiced by Sam Vincent, a.k.a. Russell and Nula's Pet Shop, uh, Kobe and Transformers Cybertron, uh, Double D and Ed and Eddie, Sideswipe and Transformers Armada, etc., etc. And every pony walks over, and then we meet the Flim and Flam Brothers. Oh, God, this is gonna hurt. Well, look at what we got here, brother of mine. It's the same in every town. Well, I heard worse reasons to start a song. With thirsty throats dry, comes and not a drop of cider to be found. Maybe they're not aware that there's really no need for this teary despair. Maybe the key that they need to solve this sad cider shortage, you and I will share. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Flynn and Flam are one di da blah. They're one dimensional characters. I'm sorry. Okay? They show no other personalities outside of being stereotypical. This and that. Now, unlike Golden Fox, I don't think they're obnoxious. They have a little charisma, but they're still one dimensional, and I don't think they have any charisma compared to Olympias from Power Rangers Light Speed Rescue or the Spy from Team Fortress 2. I mean, again, there's just. They're just one-dimensional, stereotypical oh, businessmen who and who will do anything and just to be make people happy because it, because to them, patience is a virtue. Who gives a shit? And they're just like, fuck you, give me money. So the song itself is this meh. I mean. I have been to the circus before. I don't really mind circus music all that much, mostly because I went to circus, like I said, as a kid. But the song is just... Meh. I think a major problem with the song for me is that it goes on for almost five minutes. I can understand if they're trying to do this for the soundtrack, which, by the way, they do have it on iTunes. But if you're trying to... But for crying out loud, this is like a 22-minute an episode, and you're going to pat out five minutes of it. You could do better things with it, like a story. So long story short, they have a machine. So long story short, they have a machine called the Super Speed Sire 6000, which basically makes Cypher. Oh, and big fucking surprise, everybody except the Apple family are in awe with it, making them complete and total assholes who don't even give a crap about patience as a virtue. Yeah. You got a deal! Let me know. 
<laughs> All right. So, yeah, if you haven't guessed yet, the Super Sire 6 Grouse. No way, no how that machine matches up with the pair we put in our cider. But if it really does work, we can make every pony in town happy. I just don't know, y'all. We've always made cider the same way. Yep. Well, sweeten the deal. When you supply the apple, we supply the Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000. Then we split those sweet, sweet profits, 75, 25. You know, I'm not sure if anybody else noticed this, but when I first saw this episode, I actually had the sense that this was going to be something like a John Henry scenario. You know, like, John Henry. Oh, God, I haven't seen that in, like, I haven't seen it. But, you know, John Henry, the guy with the hammer who went against the machine and when making railroad tracks, that guy. I sort of have a feeling this episode is going to be like that. Why up, naturally? Greedy assholes. And we'll throw in the magic power of the machine for free. Cider sales keep our business afloat through the winter. We'd lose sweet apple acres if we agreed to this. I mean, if you did agree to this, you could actually just find a better way to, to shorten the deal. Sort of like negotiate it 50-50. Hey, if Nami, Nami from One Piece Mansion negotiated a guy from getting 100 million berries to 300 million berries, why can't you do the same thing? No. And big surprise, they say no, and then they, and then they threat and they drive him out of business. And the next day... And you still worried about Slim and Slam? Granny Smith says they were just blowing hot air. Hmm. I'm not so sure. They sounded mighty serious when they threatened to run us out of business. Well, maybe it would have been a lot easier if you just negotiated along with them, you dumb broad. Okay, seriously. Yeah, as I said, is everybody going to be an asshole in this episode? Well, I guess this is a business episode, but seriously, getting back to that No More Heroes quote, I'm not going to take that lightly. <sighs> Again. Patience is a virtue. Who gives a shit? And we want the damn cider already. Ugh. Seriously. You're pretty much making every single pony a gigantic, impatient asshole already. So the Flim and Flam brothers show up the next day. Oh, and that Rainbow Dash Joe comes in again. Can't sell that cider. That's the apple family apple. He's just some kind of cool joke. Yeah, and a very unfunny one on Rainbow. Even if you do admittingly deserve it. Don't worry, everypony. There are plenty of apples in Equestria. We'll find some others and make more cider than all the Ponyville can drink. We'll make more Okay, so then, Apple Bloom, being the young filly that she is, decides to shoot her mouth off and a, a challenge. Now, it ain't about the speed, you know. It's about quality. Thank you, Granny Smith. Who cares how good the cider is if I never get to drink it? Again, Rainbow, you're pretty much proving to me why your dickishness in this episode is really starting to fucking amaze me. Now, look at these four dissatisfied... With our machine, we can make an upsider... And so they continue to shoot their mouths off one after another until... Granny Smith does this after one of the Flim Flam brothers call her a chicken. Well, then what's the problem? Jack, instead of just standing there work, or why don't you just stand there and do, do something? Jesus Christ, do something, you... Jesus Christ, is everybody in this episode getting smacked in the head with the idiot stick? Oh, God. Alright. Oh, my... Shit. You're asshole! Don't worry, Applejack. I know you'll win tomorrow. 
Uh, are you sure? Because if I remember a, a John Henry scenario, he managed to win, but if I heard, he up and he died. We better. Because if we don't, we're going to lose our phone. Oh, and behold the ultimate troll move from Twilight the next day when the competition's about to begin. Applejack, are you sure this is such a good idea? You just said you were you knew they were gonna win yesterday, Twilight! Oh goody, even the main character of the series is getting smacked in the head with the idiot stick in this episode. Oh, Jesus Christ. We're not even 15 minutes in. Me and the family are 100% confident in our cider-making capabilities. And besides, no food is called grain and chicken. Uh, yeah. Considering how in the later episode when Applejack called her old, you don't even think that would set her off? Attention, everybody! Okay. Alright, so the competition begins, and it's about as obvious as you can get. The competition begins with Applejack bucking the apples, Apple Bloom quickly picking them with her young energy, Granny Smith using her nose to decide from the good and the bad, and and then Big Mac using this crushing wheelie thing to make the cider. And if you haven't guessed yet, the Flim and Flam brothers have already gotten three because of the fast reading machine. Because again, if anybody is familiar with John Henry, you know the shtick. Yeah, Applejack, we didn't stand there being nervous. It could have been a lot easier if you just let's avoid this all together. Alright, so with Twilight and her friends seeing that this is clearly outnumbered, they decide to... Fuck you. She decides to step in and... Um, Ms. Mayor, are honorary family members allowed to help in the competition? Well, I'm not sure. Flim, Flam, would you object to honorary family members helping? Are you kidding? We don't care if the whole kingdom cares about him. It's a lost cause. Well, if you said that out loud, Twilight could just get Princess Celestia pretty much... Let's see what's going on and tell her to stop the competition and send and these two bozos' asses out of here. But, no. Instead, you guess? They just said it was just a lost cause. You really think that's considered hers? I guess? It's an obvious guess, you... That's the idiot. Yeah, some mayor you are. Applejack, what do you think? I think I'd love to have the rest of my family helping out. Yeah, it's not, it's not like you could have asked them for help of earlier when you had to deal with the brothers in an earlier scene, but screw it! Oh, right. Okay. Alright, so each of the remaining main six okay. get a different assignment. Yeah! Fluttershy, help Applejack with the trees. Got it. Pinkie Pie, you're on apple-catching detail. Yes, sir, master! Very. You've got a discerning eye. Help Granny Smith at the quality control station. Of course. Rainbow Dash, do you think you can help Big Macintosh press? In my sleep. All right, everypony. Let's save Sweet Apple Acres. All right. All right. So pretty much things go a lot smoother with Fluttershy helping Applejack, Pinky using her pinky scent and to help Apple Bloom. Hmm. Apple. And Granny Smith being helped by Rarity with the and with the apples, and Rainbow Dash helping Big Mac speed up the process with Twilight moving the barrels along. Hey, so the Flem and Flam brothers er, decide to double the power, knowing that they don't want to lose. And this ultimately gets to the giant flaw. But they're not getting any at all. Okay. That... That is just gonna bite them in the ass. I 
hate to spoil this, but screw it. I knew that they were just going to win, blow about it, and no pony would be satisfied. I literally could smell that a mile away as soon as they pressed that red button. Ugh, Jesus Christ. So, with no consequences and realizing I'm freezing rocks in them, the... And then Rainbow Dash decides to act like an even bigger dick and does this. Keep grinding. We don't have time for quality control if you want to win this thing. You know, has anyone heard the phrase called character assassination? Do you have any idea why Twilight isn't going to scold Rainbow Dash for her rude behavior or pretty much the Flim and Flam brothers or, or Pinky or pretty much asking Applejack for help in an earlier scene and asking her that none of this should have happened? Well, I'm going to be honest with you, that's because the episode doesn't care. If the episode isn't going to care to make our main six completely likable, why should we even care what happens in the end? Okay, so without giving too much away, A, despite everything that happens in the emotional moments, long story short, big fucking surprise, the customers aren't satisfied with the Flim and Flam Brothers or Cider. It's got rocks in it. I would pay one cent for this trip. You would pay even one cent? No. Well, I'll pay three cents. Wait a minute, now I think about it, I think I remember where I got that, because uh, I remember using the word Drek in one of my reviews. Or was it... Actually, now I've... So the Flim and Flam brothers tried to negotiate about... No! Well, and... Oh, for fuck's sake. Two bits for the barrel? Do you idiots even understand the phrase, no, you moron? <laughs> it looks like we've encountered a slight problem here in Bonnie Bear. Slight? You pretty much gave them with cider with trees and rocks in them. You really say slight? No pony wants our product. Next town. Next town. Let's go, Flam. Let's go, Flam. So they leave off with their machine and the Apple family wins. And we never see the Flim and Flam brothers again until we leave a face. Son of a bitch. Let's go. That means Sweet Apple Acres is still in business. Plus, we can have high-quality Apple Family Cider. Oh, now you accept the cider. Real late than never, you dumb schmucks. Because of these silly competition, we've made enough of our cider for the whole sale. Yeah, but without giving too much away, despite that, and you don't even have enough to give if any for Rainbow. <laughs> Fuck you. Dear Princess Lynn. Okay, moral. I wanted to share my thoughts with you. Ahem. I didn't learn anything. I was right all along. If you take your time to do things the right way, your work will speak for itself. Sure, I can tell you I learned something about how my friends are always there to help me, and I can count on them no matter what. But truth is, I knew that already, too. Okay, I can agree with you, Applejack, about the cider stuff, but the thing about with your friends, that is total bullshit, because you could have asked them for help in dealing with the Flim and Flam brothers, but no, you just sat on your ass and did nothing. <sighs> Why is it that the Super Speedy Sire Squeezy 6000 considered a good episode? Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to have to agree with Golden Fox, this episode... Oh, it's absolute shit. Because, again, because, like... <sighs> like, yeah, because I suppose it's like, what, their little half-assed moral at the end? Time of year that brought oh oh wait because again because it's like I don't even know what else to say just nothing what I have to say to that ending except this.
Like, again, that ending, what am I supposed to say to that? Oh, and I suppose that's your half-assed little message at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's good. It's really good. Really good. I like it. You, you do a good job. You do a good, good job, special. It was. It's only 45 minutes of Pelican Eternity, but you know, you did good. I just so love it. I did everything. All the characters, everything about it was so good. I just love it. this episode, and I hate to break it to you guys, but the Super Speed Sire Squeezy 6000 is shit. Okay? The character's personality is derailed. Everybody acts like a jackass. The Plymouth Flam Brothers are one-dimensional. The more the ending was predictable as all hell. Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash were completely act like gigantic dicks, being for the sake of being dicks. Okay? Nothing was really all that accomplished. Oh, and the moral half-assed has a, a D, and it only gets a D because of Applejack. Pretty much, her characterization, with the except of the Helping Friends business, saved this episode. So, because she knew that getting the stuff together was the right way to go. So, basically, Applejack was the only saving in great age of this episode. But other than that, I give this I give this episode a D and one gigantic double finger to this episode. Okay. I'm Flick Hand Gamer and I'll see you in the next episode. Read it and weep it.